Hello, and welcome back at the Bands Collector Snake YouTube channel. I'm Martin, and today we're going to talk about the one and only DTM legend, the 190E EVO 2. Introduced in May 1990 at the Geneva Motor Show, the EVO 2 was a creation what deprived from the Deutsche Tourenwagen Meisterschaft, or DTM for short, making its debut at the Notchleife track. It was an instant success. To use this track weapon in the races, however, Mercedes was ordered to fulfill the demand of producing 500 homologation specials. This would mean that the standard version would also have the same body kit and suspension setup as the ones used in the races. A big difference, however, was in the power output, with the consumer version having 232 horsepower and the race versions starting from 330 going all the way up to 380 horsepower at 9,500 RPMs. That much power, however, came with the cost because the engine would have to be rebuilt every 600 kilometers. And one of the most successful years for Mercedes in the DTM was in 92, with Klaus Ludwig being the winner of the season. Of course, with a very limited production run of only 502 specials, you had to have some serious money to buy one of these. This one being finished in Blauschwarz Metallic with a leather interior, as all EVO 2s were for the exception of only two pieces, which were finished in silver. Now, there's no way around it, so let's start to talk about the ridiculous body kit that this thing came with. As ridiculous as it may look, it completely follows the philosophy of function over form, being developed in wind tunnels to keep the best possible grip on the track. Starting at the front, we have the front splitter and the air duct for the oil cooler. Of course, the typical 17-inch EVO 2 wheels with the widened wheel arches in front. The lower sill covers side skirts. The widened back arches. The rear window cover, which was presumably added to pass regulations, otherwise the giant rear spoiler would disrupt the view of your rear view mirror. Of course, the giant rear spoiler in the back. Which is adjustable with hand by adjusting these screws here. Then we also have the bearing of the 190E 2.5 16 valve. The Evolution badge on the side. And the small detail, a rubber plug on the front to cover the hole for the towing hook. Now, Let's talk about the engine. The 2.5 liter, 16 valve, four cylinder. With a special designed head by the English company Cosworth, which helped develop the engine. Pumping out a full 232 horsepower with the consumer version, paired with a mechanical fuel injection. And now for the interior. There is much difference between this version compared to a standard 190. However, the seat bench in the back is divided in two separate seats, with each having its own side bolsters. Just like the seats in front, typical for the 
2.5 and the 2.3 16 valve. Uh, an extra option here in the center console you see uh, is the cassette deck holder and what also came standard on the 2.3 and the 2.5 versions are the three extra instruments in the center console. The first one giving uh, the reading of the oil temperature, the second one is your timer to set the lap times and the third one is the battery voltage. So this one also came with the sunroof. Uh, it is equipped as standard with the dog like gearbox. That means if you want to go into first gear, you have to go left and down instead of up. And to get to second gear, you have to go in the middle and up. And the third gear is right down. Also, this car came equipped with air conditioning. It has got power windows all around and the front two seats are heated. And right here, next to the light switch, we have the special button to raise or lower the suspension on the car. Enough talking, let's take it for a drive. Now for the driving test. We first got to warm it up, so we'll do a couple of laps. The neat thing on this is, is that we have the oil temperature gauge. That way we can see not only when the coolant is on temperature, but also the whole engine because of the oil. We're now driving on the highway. Uh, I can kind of feel that, uh, well, yeah, the car isn't highway oriented uh, you want to drive it on a, on a bit smaller roads with more bends on it even though you can reach nice comfortable speeds on the highway too right now on uh, some smaller roads you can really feel it's uh, more corner oriented not so much for uh, maximum speed but for track use the car really comes to life to be honest of course we can't push the car too hard here because we're still on an open uh, public road so we won't do that but it's, uh, it's uh, possible to say you, I can get a good impression of how the car drives and well what it's made for and it's definitely made for the track. You get a really good feeling of the car that uh, it talks in some way back to you, that uh, it says to you that you can trust it. Even though if you are a little bit scared of pushing down the barrel, as soon as you go above the 5000 RPM mark, you can hear it really come to life. Now, I will keep spending some more time driving in this car because I simply can't get enough of it. But if you would like to see more of these kind of videos, uh, would like to know more information, please let us know down in the comments. Like and subscribe for more videos and follow us on all our other socials such as Facebook and Instagram.